con ti sin mi plan I love it so much. You had the most tame reaction so far. No, because I felt so like moved by it. <laughs> oh, wait, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do my intro now. Hold on. Welcome to Confused Immigrants, the podcast where I, internationally unknown comedian Pablo Saura, interview my immigrant friends about their experience living in this country. My guest today originates from Peckham, surprise, but according to some definition or another of the word, uh, she still qualifies as some sort of immigrant, and we're going to discuss that um, today in, in depth in the podcast. Uh, so please welcome to the show uh, my, my probably my oldest friend here in London, journalist and filmmaker, Maya Yagora. Woo! Yay! How are you, Maya? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I have a coffee in my hand and I've just realised that it doesn't have a handle on the mug, which I'm fine with. But Is it too hot? No, no. Okay. But like, it just threw me off a little oh, bit. Yeah. But I'm okay. Well, it was... Uh, do you want to show it to the camera? Oh, yeah, it, was, it, um, it was a centre candle that I repurposed as a mug. Ah, I like that. Also, oh. I did pick it, so it's my fault. Yeah, well, I, th I think it's really nice because it forces you to uh, hold it with your hands. It's mm. nice in the winter. It warms you up. I like it. Um, but yeah, and it looks like vaguely Japanese. <laughs> yeah, it's why. quite stylish. Yeah, I really like it. I'm so happy that you're here. Um, I feel like we, we live relatively far from each other. Mm. I live north, you live south. Mm. Um, and we're, we're both very busy people, so we don't get mm. to see each other a lot. No. Uh, not as often as I would like, anyway. Yeah, agreed. Um, like, it's... We live so far away from each other in London standards that I sat on the tube for, I think, like, 40, 45 minutes reading my book, and when I got up to get off the tube, my legs were dead because I'd just been sitting for, like, 40 minutes without <laughs> moving reading my book. So that's when I was like, wow, I've been here a while. Yeah. Do you... How do you keep yourself entertained in the tube? Did you zone I'm out? reading a book, oh, and yeah. it's a really good book. It's called The Bees. I can't remember who it's by, but oh, yeah. it's like... Is it about bees? It is about bees. It's like a dramatised look into their lives. Um, and it's told as a... Um, it's like a religious totalitarian cult. <laughs> and it's amazing. Honestly, like, it takes me a while to get through a book, get into a book. But from the first page, I was just... I can't stop reading it. Oh, right. And so much happens so quickly that, like, I have to remind myself, oh, my God, what happened, like, a chapter yeah. ago? Is the author English? Like... I don't know. I haven't... I, d I tend... Actually, I leave... Religious totalitarian cult, rain spell. <laughs> what? From where? At the government. Oh, the government, yeah. That's the, a good point. The, um, the British Empire. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, also Spain a little bit, right? Mm. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm not exempt from Catholicism. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Um, yeah. I tend to... We invented it and you guys exported it. it. Yeah. yeah, you exported it to the rest of the yeah. world. Um, I tend not to research the writers of my books because I feel like it gives me bias while I'm reading the book. All right. So I leave that till the end. Fair enough. Yeah. I, I, this is... I, there's something that we tried to hear in the podcast. Uh -huh. uh, well, I've been kind of like uh, testing this little segment where we do, we do like, <laughs> I'm an immigrant statement. Um, so this, you're, by some definition, you might be an immigrant, by some other, you might not be. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to make an, I'm an, I'm an immigrant statement if you feel mm. like it doesn't uh, vogue with you. Mm. Um but the purpose of it is like to talk about like I'm an immigrant and I'm confused about something about um, British culture. Mm. Um, you could, if you feel like you want to join and do one, you can. You could paraphrase it the way you want it to do it. Uh, I'm going to do mine if you want. Yeah, go and show to, me. How, yeah. um, to kind of like show you. Give me an example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the one I've got for today is like uh, I'm an immigrant and I'm confused about dried fruit in pudding. Yeah. I will never understand right fruit in pudding. I actually share that with you. Mince, uh, mince pies? Yeah. Um, fruit cake? Yeah. Stop it. Don't. Raisins in particular, I can't get behind them. It's just like, because you take delicious fruit mm. and you 
put sugar in it, mm. so you're ruining the flavour already. Because the fruit mm. is never going to be as sweet as the sugar that you put in the bake in. Good point. So you're ruining the, the flavour. And then you bake it, you dry it, you take away all the nutritional value. Uh-huh. So it's like you're ruining the delicious nourishing food. The whole point that was, of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're also ruining the bacon. I feel like fruit and bacon, they, they rarely go together. So one thing when you ask me to like think of things that um, confused me about British culture and life, which was very difficult for me okay. um, because it's, you know, Everything. there's a lot of different no. nations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's that. But yeah. um, it, I was going to like say and probably, well, I say this a lot, so I have offended a lot of people in my life because I've been saying it quite freely. Okay. British, I'm interested in this. British cuisine is like they're still at war. Like the do you know what I mean? So it's like the dried fruit, the gravy, you know, it's just everything's from like pre- preservation tactics. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that always really confuses me. I I like that. I I yeah. that is really interesting. It's almost like British cuisine is like war times. Food. There was like a meme about it, like why are the, it was like a picture of like a roast dinner or something, and the caption read, "Why are the British still eating like Luftwaffe are flying overhead?" I have no idea. Do you think it's probably because it's like it's the the time that they felt the most heroic, so they're still like stuck in it? Interesting. Yeah. They well, have when, like a rest of development. Yeah. <laughs> As a nation, I started watching yeah. that recently. By oh, yeah. the way, it's really good. It could be that, or it could be just that, like, that's when immigrants started to really come in and give them some good food mm, yeah I don't know. That too. my history is on point there but fair enough yeah but yeah i think that was a great example i like i enjoyed that very much do you have more or is that your, no you we, just have one we do like a little um yeah confused statement we can also call it a, for this episode the confused statement yeah because i don't um, think i feel comfortable calling myself an immigrant right I wouldn't, here's the thing, I wouldn't call you an immigrant yeah. either. Because I, and I guess that's why you invited me on this podcast, because yeah. I, I'm within that liminal space where my yeah. parents are immigrants, but I was yes. born and raised here. Yes. Um, so that makes it a bit tricky. And I'm still, I'm 30 years old and I'm still trying to figure out cultural yeah. identity and where I fit. Yeah. In London, it's easy to fit, but the the issue is when you start to come across other proper English people. Yeah. That's when I start to have confusion and like right existential yeah i mean problems yes yeah i mean absolutely this yeah. this is such, such a great like segue because um because yeah like i would never I would, I would have never thought of you as an immigrant um in fact like i see you as like you're the like the quintessential like londoner mm. Mm. um and also like with all with every right like born and bred londoner mm. Mm. um but at the same time i feel like it's one of the reasons that we get along so well and we've been mm-hmm. friends for over a decade now is really since 2013 yeah. so 10 years 2012 really 2012 yeah. okay yeah more than a decade yeah that makes sense yeah. yeah um and um and and i feel like the reason we get along so well is that like we i feel like we both have like a multicultural background absolutely yeah. yeah and there's a lot of i i feel like i've bonded a lot with you over that yeah absolutely yeah. i mean there was one day that i woke up and i realized i woke up well you know like i just had a bit of an epiphany when i realized that um m- most of my friends like 99 percent of my friends are either from other countries or their parents or grandparents are um and yeah i think that speaks to like cultural identity and and understanding each other based on some level that we share based on that yeah that yeah sense? yeah absolutely i feel like or to me at least there's an element of feeling a bit like uh an outsider and feeling like you're you know like this is home but you're not from here mm. i'm speaking from personal experience because you might not feel the same way because I, I feel a bit differently yeah but, yeah yeah um be, especially when i used to, when i say the words like but I'm not from here because I, I can say that about myself and it can feel more or less comfortable. But it's, you know, to, to a lot of people that would sound true. Um, I don't know. I don't I'm understand saying. what you just said. Tell me again. Yeah. Like when, when I said like, um, like this is this is home, but I'm not from here. Mm-hmm. Like I am 
literally not from here. Like mm-hmm. I, didn't, I was not born in this country, mm-hmm. and I I moved here relatively late. Mm-hmm. Um, so I did a lot of my or my schooling, like almost all of it in another country. Yeah, I I wouldn't like I I would say that being born here isn't really as important as growing up. Like being born in a country isn't that important to your cultural identity as growing up there. I would say yeah. because. You know, I don't remember being born. Like, it doesn't matter. If anything, it's just a flex for me when people are like, you know, when I'm... I have a Polish passport, um, yeah. which is something else we can get into later. Yeah. If we have time. But, yeah. like, um, so I'm not a British national, even though I was born yeah. and raised here because the way laws are here. Um, so it's a flex for me when I'm on border control coming back into the UK. They see my Polish passport and they're like, you know, before I open my mouth with this British accent and they're like... Um, you know, how long have you been in the country? And I'm like, from con- conception, you know? Yeah. And they're just like, <laughs> you have a foreign face, but you sound like one of us. Yeah. Yeah. They get really confused. So it's like a flex for me, like it's a power yeah. move, which I do, you know, I do okay. get upset sometimes when I realize that like that, well, I'm aware of the fact that that's a privilege in itself that I sound British because my parents don't have that privilege. Yes. And I, and I wonder, but I, but, and I've also seen it that whether they're treated differently as a result, or whether yeah. people disrespect them because they assume certain things about yeah. them. Because I, I've had that. I've had British people assume things about me until I open my mouth, and then, and then I see like almost like an added level of yeah. understanding or maybe even respect given to me. Yeah, which... but it's almost like it takes a step to get to that to that respect. Yeah. You know? When you t- when you talk about like coming through. Um, customs or what about the airports and there's almost like there's the the assumption and the context of like you're Polish I'm trying very hard yeah, to no, that's okay. quietly and then there's the gratification that you get from showing them that they were wrong yeah that's the gratification because I mean it is I guess there is a complex process there of like feeling invalidated maybe yeah because they don't understand my cultural identity, which I mean, why would they know? You know, I'm just a random person, but it's just more like you would expect people by now to realize that people like me exist. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Let's put this a little bit into a little timeline for the people listening. Yeah. Um, so, well, let's start with our friendship. Like we mm-hmm. met, we met 11 years ago. Mm-hmm. I think I remember you meeting, like I remember meeting you at one of Eve's parties. Mm. Evan, you were together in you in the same class at uni. And for context, Ev is our shared friend. Yes, it's um, our shared friend Ev. We were yeah. all in uni together, but we were in different years. Yeah. Um, and um, and then we met at one of Ev's parties. Mm. And I remember, I think I was like too drunk, and I just I like, wandered into Ev's bedroom to like sit on Ev's bed for a minute or two. And then you came. You, I feel like you didn't know me. Like you might, we might have been introduced earlier that evening, and that was it. And you came to my rescue to check on me to see if I was okay. And I, I thought that was like really sweet and touching. Aww. I remember you telling me this and I have a yeah. vague memory of it. But I think since then, there's been so many situations where we've just been hanging out in like a spare bedroom at a party, yeah. just chatting or like falling yeah. asleep or whatever. So Yes. Tucking someone in. Oh, tucking <laughs> yeah. someone in, making sure they're not puking, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I remember, um, I mean, since... Since then, that was eleven years ago. I mean, we've we've our friendship has uh, grown and and morphed since. And I've like I've learned a lot about you. I mean, you. I think like you told me at some point, it, were you born at St Thomas Hospital? Yeah. 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 I think I will uh, walk in past and you told me once. Mm, you, I do like to tell people that. <laughs> yeah. Why? I don't know. Again, it's a flex. It's like, you know, this is where I was born, which I would do anywhere. But also it's like a fancy hospital. It's across from Houses it of is, Parliament, yeah. which, I, you know, again, it's like feeds into this like backstory I have in my head of like, like F you to. Oh, God, maybe I shouldn't be doing that on camera. But like. It's absolutely fine. I this know. is a very informal podcast. Yeah, I know, but like <laughs> this immigrant kid yeah. was born like across from you. Yeah. Awful people. But I guess. Yeah. yeah. This is really interesting, yeah, because I I totally understand the like the the gratification that you get from subverting people's expectations, um, 
but I, I can't let go of like what does it mean that those expectations are there in the first place would you rather would, this is a question for you like would you rather that those expectations wouldn't be there from the get-go um, would you rather people would just like drop their assumptions and yeah but I think that's asking for too much okay because you know people have their their backgrounds and their experience or lack of experience and, and that's just how it is and mm -hmm. I think maybe I would have a more understanding or better handle on it um, if I'd had to deal with it earlier in life because mm. I feel like the first time I felt like oh I'm not because within London I feel completely fine normal mm. my cultural identity is pretty concrete because you know it's a melting pot I, I went to school with like it was all girls school and there were girls from like Nigeria and Jamaica and Spain and Poland and like all these different places so I was used to being around people from completely different areas of the world to where my parents were from yeah um but then it was when I got to uni um and I started to meet kids from around the UK or like from mm, smaller places towns even cities around the U uh, around England that I started to be like what's happening here <laughs> because we're, we're speaking the same language we're speaking English but it's like some undercurrent of understanding and meaning was missing mm. and I think that's the culture you know we the culture is so different the understanding is so different the lifestyles the upbringings are so different I guess you can compare that from anyone who's grown up in a city especially a major city and like other places smaller places but it's also just because the rest of England is so different. You know, London is its essentially its own city state compared to yeah. the rest of it's its own country yeah. compared to the rest yeah. of England. London feels very very friendly to outsiders, and I'm using the word outsider in the in the broader sense where not necessarily people who come from outside outside London, but like I'm thinking of like I'm thinking of I'm thinking of I say I said this in a previous episode, like London belongs to um immigrants um like queer people and people of color i feel like they they populate london they really make london what it is yeah um and when i get really i get a bit annoyed when i get an english person this who's not from london mm. explaining london to don't me don't get me started on that an english person from the shire explaining london to me i mean is, yeah. you took the words right out my mouth yeah, yeah. Uh, because it's like london doesn't belong to you london no. belongs to the immigrants, the people of color, and the gays. Like they, literally, the gays flock from like every other part of the nation <laughs> to survive in London because yeah, they're like because they will they be can. second class citizens yeah. in every other part of the country. Well, I mean, anyway. I, I, I do want to say that of course London belongs to everyone. The issue is when you when you come here and you I disagree and you I try think, to. Imp <laughs> well, great, I, I think it doesn't belong to. No, no, I'm, I'm joking. I mean, I guess the issue yeah. is like don't try to imprint. Something onto it that it isn't. I don't know. I don't think I I've worked through how I feel about this. But yeah. you know, one one of my best friends, um, Megan, her mum, she came from somewhere outside of London. I think so. She, her parents are Welsh, but I mean, you know, I consider Megan like my most English friend. Sure. But even then, I don't. It's almost she's in this liminal space because she's a Londoner as well. You know, she went. She went to school. You couldn't tell me otherwise. Like yeah, exactly. Yeah, she met her she went and, yeah. to school in Peck, and that's how we met. So like her experience is very similar to mine. We have a lot of understanding between us, based on history and 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 that culture growing up in mm. London. Um, but you know, so you know, when I think of her mum coming from, I can't remember where it was, but let's say it's probably totally wrong, but somewhere close to London, like Essex or or, or Dorset. I don't know. Sure. Forgive me, Megan, if you watch this, <laughs> but um. You know, I f well, I think, well, she's queer, so maybe yeah, you know, I take it back. I I wasn't gonna say it, but yeah, you, you got right, there. Yeah. yeah, but you know, in theory, it's like everyone's welcome in London, of course. Yeah. Not that I'm the gatekeeper of London, but it's just yeah. like don't come here. No, I am. No. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm, like, I'm right. kidding. I'm kidding. You know what? That's yeah, what we're gonna yeah, do. Yeah, now. Yeah, we're yeah. the gatekeepers. No. And yeah. You have to come and apply to us, and I'll yeah. be behind the desk, being like, "How long have you been in London yeah. for?" Yeah. 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 yeah, anyway. I like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, in theory, it should, London should be for everyone, but I guess if you 
come here wanting to remake London in the image of the village that you grew up in, in England, yeah. which tends to be um, a lifestyle that isn't sustainable in a place like London. I guess I'm yeah. trying to say middle slash upper class, but um, I think that's the issue. Yeah, it defeats the purpose yeah. of you're the, not, the metropolis that is London yeah, in the first place. It's, it's like the intention, right? You're not. It's like if you come to London to see what it has to offer, that's great. Or if you come to London to just imprint upon it what you have left, I just yeah. feel like, and that and that's the is- my issue with London at the moment, like yeah. where it's going or where it has gone, mm. which is again a t- totally separate topic. But. No, but we, you know, we can we can talk about it as well a little bit. Um, so to kind of like bring it back a little bit to your own timeline. Mm. So you were born in Santa Marta Hospital to a Polish mum yep. and a Serbian dad. Yep. Um, yeah. Um, do you know why they came here? Better opportunities. Yeah. You know, like they both, like my, respectively, they came from communist and socialist countries. Yeah. I think my dad was doing some business here with like musical instruments, yes. importing them or exporting them or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, that you know, it's quite wild to me. As someone who's lived in the same city her whole life, it's crazy to think that they did that at that time as well. I grew up in this kind of like multicultural household because it's not like yeah. it's not like you grew up in a in a Polish family no. you know part of your life you grow up with a, a Polish mum and Serbian dad mm. then also your parents split up mm. right um, you were living with your stepdad for some time as well yeah so was, my mum and my stepdad yeah, my, my stepdad English, is right? yeah so he's half English half Jamaican but he was born and raised uh, with his uh, English mother and I think English stepdad. Right, right, right. So he he doesn't really have that cultural part of you know he didn't grow up with that. Yeah. Caribbean culture, but um. But is yeah. it true like melting pot of like cultures yeah. in a way? And I credit my stepdad for the reason why I have any kind of understanding or connection to British slash London culture because and and why I sound British because. Yeah he was that kind of bedrock for that uh-huh. otherwise you know if i if my parents had stayed together or my mom had you know gotten with someone who was from somewhere else yeah. uh, another immigrant then i think i would have a very different understanding of british culture right. and maybe i'd even have a different accent you know well speaking of like accents and, and language you told me a story once i don't know if you remember and maybe i made it up but probably Let's you told see. me yeah <laughs> um that you when you were little mm. your parents spoke polish or serbian or both around the house and you could more or less speak trilingual yeah you could speak those languages yeah and there was something I think you told me. So, what, do you remember this story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yes. want to tell it? Because I'm going to butcher it. Yeah, so. sure. Butcher. Butcher it. Yeah. I'm going to butcher it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to edit that to make me sound less boring. So. <laughs> no, no. You don't mind me yeah. um, correcting you. No, yeah, it's good. Yeah, because I know my parents want me to correct them, so I yeah. just assume that. Yeah. So, um, when people ask me why I don't speak Polish or. S- Serbian. I mean, I kind of understand and speak more Serbian than I do Polish because it's Polish is a very difficult language, and I spent more time in Serbia than I did in Poland um, when I was younger. So basically, my Serbian is more developed than my Polish. Mm. Um, but when people ask me why I'm not fluent in both, I say that's because from what I remember, I think I asked my parents once maybe I asked my mom like why am I not fluent why did you not speak to me at home in Polish like every other immigrant kid you know and she said that I was trilingual up until I went to like nursery or primary school or something like that and the kids made fun out of me for my accent um and I came home really upset maybe even crying and I think maybe I kind of interpreted it this way but they they said they started speaking English to me at home and I think I don't know if they said this or I interpreted it this way, but um, I just took that as well. I'm not trilingual because my parents wanted me to assimilate. Yeah. So that's why kind of one of the main reasonings of people 
essentially being like xenophobic or racist being like you come here you don't assimilate like you cling on to your culture too much it's like well i could be unstoppable and trilingual right now if my parents didn't want me to assimilate more fully yeah. which i don't blame them for like i can't imagine sure. being coming to this country meeting another immigrant and having a kid in a completely different country like i can't even like imagining living in Poland, which I have some connection to that country and like settling down maybe with, I don't know, an Italian person there and having a kid that that's like terrifying to me. So yeah. if that's what they thought was best at the time, then fine. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I got that story completely wrong, but that's, that's a conversation I remember happening, ha- sure. having with maybe my mom like a few years back. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's not, as important, like, the specifics of, of how that happened or how that went along. Um, but the, kind of, like, the, the lesson that you took away from it, like, I'm, I'm almost seeing, like, almost like a little bit of, um, like, on one hand, the story with your parents is almost, like, begrudging a bit the need to assimilate and fit in. in Who I am begrudging. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know, yeah. No, I think that's fair, yeah, because, like, I would love to be trilingual, and, you know, with two Slavic languages under your belt, you can speak a whole... You can speak or understand a host of others. Yeah. So, you know, I I do wish that that had happened differently. Yes. And it's always when I'm in an Uber and I'm having a conversation like this with the driver, and they're like, why don't you speak your parents' languages? And I'm just like... I get a bit annoyed because I'm like, yeah. I'm like, well, don't judge my parents. Like, yeah. you don't know what they went through. Oh, I yeah, mean, for sure. Yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, it's this that old cliche of, like, being bilingual is only chic when you're, like, posh and wise. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Um, but also, I like that there, when you were talking about your stepdads, there was, there was a set, like, I was almost picking up some prize that he made such an effort to to pass on this like I, London culture. I don't think you. it was an effort for him. It's just something that happened naturally, yeah. you know. So yeah, but it's almost like I'm almost I don't know. But it's almost like if because you said something like really interesting, which is like I wish that would have um, I, I wish they would have gone about it a different way. Or I wish it would have gone a different way. So it's like not to say I resent. Uh, you know that they wanted me to fit in, and you know because yeah. that that must have been important for you and for your you know survival in in school, or whatever. But yeah, it's just like I it, this if it's at the expense of like erasing mm. the that part of your culture, that it does seem like can seem like a bit of a high price to pay. Yeah. So I, I understand the nuance of like it's not that it was bad. Is that oh I think I do understand. Like is that I wish. It, it would have happened slightly differently because mm. I can just a minute earlier when you were talking about your stepdad, there was a sense of like, I'm so grateful that I learned all these things about London from him. Mm. Um, and you were saying like, if had I been raised by like, had my parents stayed together and been raised by then, maybe it would have an accent. Maybe it would be, um, and it's like, yeah, it's almost like a bit of a sliding, sliding door situation. Yeah. Like my life could have been different, but it's not, not necessarily better or worse. Um, no, it just yeah. is. It's just kind of looking back, reflecting and seeing how certain things have influenced where you are today, you know. It's just interesting, isn't it? Yeah. There's something you mentioned once to me that despite the fact that you you'd have a you have a very South London accent. You like you sound like you're from London. You have a London accent. To me. Yeah. To this foreigner here. Okay. But and you probably um, then you started. Didn't you do English literature at school? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uni. uni, yeah. Um, you're probably like one of the uh, one of my most eloquent friends. Um, I'm well read as well. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. You're like like you're on some level so quintessentially British, mm. and yet we've had a conversation before where. English people would say that the the way you speak is somehow foreign. Mm. And I don't, it, it was hard when we had this conversation, it was hard for me to understand 
because it was like, well, it's not about the accent, but it's, some, it's something. Mm. I don't know what it... Do you remember us having this conversation? Maybe. Yeah. Vaguely. Um, I think, yeah. What, I mean, I don't know if this is directly related, but one thing that it reminded me of was um, the fact that, like, everyone has, like, um, has their own kind of sliding scale of knowledge, right? Right. So it's, like, it's happened a few times where, like, I've been with friends who, for example, you and Ev... Yeah. Um, Ev, who is French, yeah, French, for context. Um, and there's been jokes about like when you were getting your British uh, nationality sorted, both of you. Um, that like I'm the Brit, like I'm the British one, or like yeah. it kind of slips out of my friend's mouth, or like Marta, who's Spanish, like, yeah. oh, the British friend is, and um, or maybe even English, which is like that that's a contentious thing in itself, which is a whole different topic. Yeah. Um and I find myself being a bit like, oh, okay, so my immigrant friends to my immigrant friends I'm like quintessentially British, but then to the British lot I'm foreign. Yeah. So it's like depending on who's viewing me, yes. you know, my cultural identity switches. Yes. So that's quite I've found that sometimes difficult. Is it, do you? Yeah. Just, is it being disor- disorienting? Yeah, yeah, like, in the moment. Um, and then I find myself being, like... Because I've had it with people in the past where they're... <laughs> it's always English people telling me, but you're English. What do you mean, you're English? And it's just like, well, no, I don't culturally feel yeah. English. My identity isn't. And then they are almost, like, offended by that because they think that I'm viewing England as, like the worst aspects of it. Like, literally, someone, uh, someone no. said, like... <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, no. yeah, I guess there's an element of that, but I think it's because English culture is so specific. Mm. That's why you, it's hard to feel like I fit within that, especially growing up in London, whereas British is, like, a catch-all term. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so... What was your question? <laughs> well, no, this is interesting. This is really interesting because yeah. you were almost talking about, like how the context, like in one context you you could present as very quintessentially British and in another one, very foreign. Mm. Um, And this relates to my question. My question was specifically about, um, I guess it was a, it was a little bit about language. Like we we had a conversation before where um, some of the British English people that you went to uni with, um, I think they might have made a comment about how the way you spoke was to them particularly foreign, and I was, mm. and that seemed crazy to me because it's like, yeah, that's so specific. Like, and and yeah. to me, it's like, how? Well, I think in the the only reason I can come up with is, um, oh. like maybe sometimes I think I've squashed this completely out of my vocabulary. But in the past, I used to pronounce certain words a bit off or a bit wrong really and that would kind of like give me away uh, i do that all the time though yeah, yeah. and i mean ultimately like my first On understanding purpose, of, no. yeah <laughs> just to like throw people yeah. off but ultimately the first people who taught me english were foreigners so like yeah. of course like certain words go a bit like the pronunciation or the stress on it might Ugh. um go off a bit and but you know so, it's not not it's like not a nice feeling when someone's like no. oh like poking and prodding and it's probably yes. like going into some like childhood playground trauma or something like oh you said that wrong you said that funny haha yeah so you make sure you never do it again yeah and you know sometimes when i am tired or like angry some some, some weird accent comes out um so maybe that's some kind of reptile angry part accent. of my brain yeah <laughs> angry immigrant accent <laughs> so yeah that's the one example i can think of where i've been having a conversation with a with an English person and they've made me feel other yeah. or foreign. Which is like I think it would be different if they were like, Oh, you pronounce that differently. That's interesting. Yeah. Like did you notice that or why do you think that is? But it is usually like, ha ha Yes. Why did you say what was it like Lucasade or something? I don't know yeah. how you're meant to say it or if that's the right Which is a brand say, name, isn't it? <laughs> or like, yeah, it's, it's and just... no one no one knew how to say Nike until recently, so Yeah, yeah good point. Yeah. 
So it's so, just ugh, whatever, man. Just, yeah, yeah. I made my a, peace with it since then. Yeah, I mean, good, like, well done because it's also there's like that that um, almost like that hidden that hidden intention of like when you're like making a point of like there's a right way and a, and a wrong way of mm. approaching language when language is something that's relatively organic yeah, and, and evolves exactly and yeah i just wanted to say non-podcast related it's yeah I, yeah you got an eye on your phone from mm, eliza yeah ish. we're gonna yeah okay well in case that she's like outside and calling you is she no 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 oh, we're fine okay, we'll see okay. we're fine um, so you um, you were um, you were born here. You went to school here. Mm-hmm. You don't have a British passport. No, I don't. What is that about? <laughs> okay, well, l- let me begin the story. Yeah. So I might have committed minor fraud growing up because <laughs> I assumed that I was British because I was born here. So like on forms, I would put down like nationality British, and it was only like when Brexit happened. Um, and I started to get nervous and call into question my nationality because I have a Polish passport. Um, uh, the, the, the online government, so the government website has like a handy little quiz to see whether you are a British um, national because mm-hmm. obviously like, which is a testament to like how people like me need it, I guess. And I went through the motions. I was like 26 at the time. I went through the motions and there was a resounding no, you're not a British national or citizen. Um, and that was a bit of a confusing moment at 26 to realize mm. that like, I'm not British, I'm technically Polish. So that was like an, an identity crisis in itself. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, at 26, I realized that I'm technically bureaucratically legally polish yeah but culturally yeah you know and and this had to do with the fact that the uk belonging to the european union yeah you didn't need a british citizenship to reside in the in, in the united kingdom for for your entire life yeah i mean i i had settled status before poland joined the eu mm. anyway so i assumed that 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 kind of i assumed that i go back to that so i'm a bit nervous about the next time i leave the country but yeah. We can come back to this. Yes, we're going to take a quick break. uh, And when we come back, we're going to carry on. We're going to finish this interview. So we're back. And uh, before we took this break, we were talking a little bit about your... um, With the fact that you were born here, you went to school here, you, you... don't have a British passport yet. You're in the, you're in the process of yeah. Yeah, getting one. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and this had to do a little bit with like basically a loophole in at the time with the fact that you could you could be a citizen of like another EU country mm. and be born in the United Kingdom and you didn't need a a British citizenship to reside here, basically. So you, you've never needed it for uh, for your entire life, or or am I or am I oversimplifying that? Well, I mean, I so I had settled status yeah. just um, from birth, or I I don't know the details to be Fair honest, enough. but um, so yeah, so I had I have settled status, um, and then I have I'm a Polish national with a Polish passport, um. And I didn't really need... So the set, the settled status looks like a stamp in your passport that you have to show at the border when you turn up. And I never really needed to use that once Poland joined the EU. Hmm. So that was easy and nice, but like obviously since Brexit... Um, I'm not sure if I've even left the country since Brexit. Yeah. I mean, maybe I must have, but... Um, I don't think I have actually so that's going to be interesting to see how that works because I guess it's going to revert back to my settled status because that's what I've always had yeah um but it's it has been important to me since you know I found out I'm not a British national to it um that I do need to get that I mean I, I thought about it for quite a while like do I need the British passport does it matter does the citizenship matter like mm. what, what is being British like do I even want to be here you know all of these kind of complicated emotions um yeah but then I realized you know 
usually while I'm wistfully looking out over the cityscape of London from a rooftop, <laughs> um, that this, you know, this is my home and I want to feel confident and secure in my ability to be here. Um, you know, I'm more British than I am Polish, but mm. again, it's like cultural identity is separate from legal documents. Mm. So having a Polish passport is great because they're still part of the EU. Yeah. Um, you know, I have family there, but my life is here. So yeah. having a British um, passport or document to allow me to come and go as I please and vote in a general election, which I've yeah. never done, um, is important to me. And, yeah. you know, that took a while to get to that conclusion. So I'm currently in this Bermuda Triangle process of trying to get different uh, documents, legal documents, and I keep hitting walls with like bureaucracy and technical issues with their sites because Jesus Christ. <laughs> the website, like the official websites for governments and like embassies and all that are just a mess. There's always some kind of issue with it. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at at the moment. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And I think that it's, it's you made a really great point of like your cultural identity is like it's not defined by a legal document. No. But it's shocking how how much it can be affected by it. So it's yeah. like if this is your home, but you don't have freedom to come in and out of it because of a legal document. Yeah. That is, it, it's a huge negative impact mm. in your life. And, you know, and it's it, like a huge blow to your cultural identity. In a Absolutely. Way. Um, so it's like, it's it's really interesting. Like, yeah, and it makes a lot of sense. Um, and even though, my, even though my story is like so different in many ways, like um, I feel similarly and I feel like that's the reason why I also became a mm. British citizen. It was because like, I've lived my entire adult life here. Mm. Um, I'm not about to start over in another country. So uh, I need I need some reassurance that I can come and go as I please yeah. from my home. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I think that was... Um, I think that was a really, really interest, like really interesting insight into cultural identity and like mixed cultural identity, specifically mm. yours. I I feel really, um, I feel really grateful that you uh, agreed to be on the podcast because I feel like you're, um, I feel like you helped perhaps like not so much. You know, I brought you here with the hope that your particular case would like help expand the definition of immigrant. I don't think it did that. Okay. I feel like what it did is like, it almost like help, um, almost like get like a more like nuanced understanding of like the use of the word immigrant. Um, Cause it's almost like, it's almost like, like I, I, I see you now as like, a lot of your story like overlaps with the characteristics or the definition of an immigrant, mm. but it's not like I can lump you in with everyone else. So it's like it almost like it's all it almost like like it almost like help help me like explore and discover this almost like permeable boundary between like um, immigrant yeah. and and British. Um, but that's that's great. I'm glad to hear that because, like I said um, earlier on, uh, I occupy this liminal space, right? I'm like in between and flowing with throughout both definitions yeah. of like I guess immigrant or someone. Who, what's the opposite of immigrant? Uh, I guess national. I national, don't know. but I'm not a national. But well, you, yeah. you know what I mean. It's just like I occupy this liminal space, and I think it's just it's not just me that occupies Even it. Even local, I don't know. Yeah. Um, we'll do some research. Yeah, I should have done some research. Yeah. No, you you were, uh, yeah, I you were, you were required to do no research for these. So. I know, but yeah. just for my own <laughs> sake, you know. Yeah. But it's just you know, humans are complex. You like language allows us to make sense a little bit 
of ourselves and like yeah. our situations but like no one word can be my brain has just yeah up with you. one word can't just like summarize everything and everyone's oh, experience yeah. basically yeah that's what i'm trying to say it's almost like we use it as shorthand and that can be misconstrued that's yeah. the problem yeah. like when you have one word explaining or describing so many different types of human experience like you it, it's not descriptive enough yeah um i agree yeah, yeah. Uh, on that very like pithy note, we're going to take another quick break. Uh, and when we come back, we're going to meet our second guest and we're going to play a game that we call in this program uh, Legally British. So see you after the break. So welcome back to Confused Immigrants. Uh, it's time for our segment, Legally British. I object. So glad you used that. <laughs> in this segment, we have a confused immigrant, which um, I guess like filling in for our uh, confused immigrant is, is today is Maya. I mean, we had a whole... Uh, confused second generation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so in this segment, we have a confused immigrant in this episode as confused second generation immigrant and the token Brit uh, compete against each other in a pop quiz of real life... Uh, was, Real life in the UK questions from the British citizenship test. Um, so our our confused immigrant today uh, is actually a confused second generation immigrant. Uh, <laughs> is the uh, the you met you met her already? Is the stunning Maya Yagoda? Woo! And uh, her token <laughs> break this episode is a friend and colleague. Please welcome to show Eliza Ketcher. Hello, everybody. Um, so. so I'm <laughs> Eliza and Maya, here are the rules of the game. Okay. Uh, you'll both take turns answering a series of real questions pulled directly from the official Life in the UK test. Mm. And we'll have one chance to answer them. If you don't know the answer or get it wrong, your opponent will have a chance to steal your turn. The person with the most questions answered correctly wins the game. If the British person loses, and this is very kind of you, Eliza, to have agreed to this Not at uh, all. beforehand. I'm getting flown to Rwanda. Exactly. And I, and yes. I, get, I get your citizenship. You get to live in yeah. my house. Um, yeah, okay, no, that's not true. Yeah, just hate yeah. your life. Okay, um, oh my God. Like every good immigrant should. Oh! Right? Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Exactly. So you're already familiar with the game, yeah. brilliant. Um, so uh, the stakes are high. Uh, let's, start the, let's start the game. Okay. Yeah, my palms are actually sweating. I'm not. I'm um, fucked. I'm, yeah. Can I swear on this podcast? Yeah. I'm fucked. Mm. Um, so the first question is for Maya. Mm -hmm. uh, and the question is, which of these is a famous classical music event in the UK? And it's a multiple choice question. Okay. The possible answers are A, the proms. B, tea in the park. C, Creamfield. D, <laughs> Glastonbury Festival. What was the question again? <laughs> Which of these is a famous classical music event in the UK? Classical music event. A, proms. A. That is correct. That is one point for Maya. Well Thank done. You. I wanted you to repeat the question because I knew that they would try to trip you up. Sure, <laughs> so sure. So I was like, is the word classical? Get me. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like event. If it was like yeah. a competition or something, then mm. it wouldn't be the problem. Yeah. I don't think I don't think I've I mean, ever watched Are there any yeah. classical music competitions? Yeah, yeah that's the real know. question. This is the wrong people write to write these down. Yeah. 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 <laughs> totally. Um, so question number two is for Eliza. Okay. Um, and the question is which British sportsman won five consecutive gold medals at the Olympic Games in the rowing category? Oh, okay. I might as well just pack my fucking bags. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'm out of here. <laughs> Do you to, I'll give you a copy of my key, Maya. Do you want to hear the possible answer? Yes! Okay. A. Sir Chris Hoy. B. Christopher Dean. C. Bradley Wiggins. D. Sir Steve Red Red Redgrave. I, 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 I think it's... I want to say A, but because I know who Chris Hoy is and I know he's like a big deal. He's like a cyclist. <laughs> do you want to hear the question again? Yes, please. <laughs> Which British sportsman won five consecutive gold medals at the Olympic Games in the rowing category? Oh, fuck. Yeah, no, <laughs> okay, <laughs> right, rowing. Cool. Now I'm in it. Do Can I have the, the list of the answers again, again? Yeah. A, Sir Chris Hoy. B, 
B, Christopher Dean. C, Bradley Wiggins. D, Sir Steve Redgrave. I'm going to say B because he's the only one I haven't heard of and I don't know any rowers. I object. I am so sorry, Eliza. The correct answer was D, so Steve Redgrave. He's a rower? Apparently he's a footballer. So. No, I, d- I don't believe that's true. I, I object. I don't <laughs> yeah. know. This is okay. <laughs> We Damn can, you! <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't have done. I would have gone for one of the sirs because I assume if you've won five, you fuck. Get, yeah, it's a no, very I get a circle as well. So yeah, it's a super yeah. Portion, yeah. Um, but I hear okay. Rwanda's really nice this time. <laughs> yeah, send me a postcard. I feel like you're just going to be answering the questions incorrectly on purpose. Absolutely so not. I want to so win. Go I want to win. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, they, don't worry. There's still many questions left. You still have a chance to win the game. Are there um, opportunities for sabotage? Uh, I feel like you can make them. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> A swift qu- elbow to the face. Yeah. 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 All of my questions are going to be like, is it... I don't know. It's just going to be very easy questions, and then Eliza's ones are going to be like, "What is?" Pie? I feel like that is a that is a heinous accusation. <laughs> what is by to the nearest yeah. five decimal points? <laughs> that is a heinous accusation, and your question is, uh, Maya, which flower is associated with England? Is a it- a rose, B a daffodil, uh, or D a shamrock, or C a shamrock. Sorry, uh, A a rose. I think mine's not easy. Well, I it's gave hilarious. you a clue for that the other day because we were talking about St. David's Day and I said, I'm going to come in with my daffodil. And then, you know, because it's the national flower of I Wales. don't remember that. Well, you I remember there. you pulling it out that it's St. David's Day on Monday on and I was like, I'm what are you talking March, about? And I said, I'm going to come in with my daffodil. I don't are remember the daffodil. To, are you trying to say credit for Maya's point? Like, if you can get I am basically point. bringing yeah. the stereotypical Brit to this game. Yeah, I'm yeah. like taking credit for the yeah. second generation she's, immigrants she's work. She's bricks, brick, wait, she's bricksplaining. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. I can't it's even say we, I thought that was my role here. I meant yeah. to be representing yeah. my yeah. ignorant, you know, people. I think you did an amazing job. <laughs> <laughs> And yet you still had to be like, I take yeah. credit for this. Okay, okay, yeah. God. Let's what if then. I said shamrock? If you said shamrock, then then it would have been your fault. No, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, yeah. I yeah. take credit for your um, yeah. victory. For your success and your success yeah. okay, only. Okay, well, yeah. let's see what you get there. <laughs> right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, don't worry, yeah. Eliza, there's still, uh, you, there's still many opportunities for you to... Um, to uh, win the game. Okay. Um, so do you ne- your, ne- your next question, Eliza, is how many members are there in a jury in Scotland? Oh, come on. And come the, on. And the, ans- the answers are A, 10, B, 12, C, 15, D, 18. She only got three <laughs> choices, by the way. I so it was so easy. setting me up for a loss already here, Pablo. Wow. I, I don't make up the questions. There's I... a real question from the life in the UK. Well, there. God damn it. I, oh, okay. Um... I just thought that the universal number for a jury was 12. I like that you've already hovered the mouse over the incorrect sound effect. <laughs> I did see that. Okay, I'm going to say... I, I want to say this is a trick question because I thought that a jury had to be 12 and you're laughing. So I don't I think, think they have trick questions. And you're moving you it over to the... <gasps> This, like it's hard. Did you, this is a trick question. Oh! Do they give you trick questions? The answer is um, is fifteen in a criminal jury, and twelve in a civil jury trial. What? So was that trick from you or from the government? These are these are real questions from the local <gasps> UK. Tess Maya, uh, I feel I show me this that. is a, this is a, <laughs> the fact that you're implying that I uh, that I might have faked a question. Um, I'm, I'm frankly offended. I'm so sorry. I think it I reflects really it. badly on her part. Yes. I, I, think, I think you should be deducting a point just for yeah. that. Okay. Well, <laughs> we're going to leave this with enemies. <laughs> we're going to give her another chance. Uh, but yeah. So the correct um, answer was it trick, was a trick question. question. Yeah. <gasps> they yeah. give you trick questions. So this is this is uh, two points for Maya, one point for Eliza. I feel like um, Eliza, like... I, I, I'm starting to see, like, I feel like she might take over the game and, like, win. Okay, but can yeah. we just rewind a second? I also think I have a better I attitude, like... and Maya's actually, like, um, I think this term is being a sore loser. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I feel like you're obsessing over... Yeah, I am. 
Yeah. Like, do they actually try to trick you when you're doing I, your test? Uh, Maya, I'm telling you, these are real questions from the from the UK test. Like, what else do you want to say? What would you put? Like, if you'd got that when you did yours, is I, there a box that says like none of the above? I, you, well, I guess you'll find out when you do your life in the UK test. No, I don't have to. Okay. Do you know well, what? I guess you'll never no. find out. Because um, yeah. I, yeah, that's the story. Yeah. But yeah, they should give this to half the people who are like native British. Actually, oh yeah, this well, place like, would be a desert island. Yeah. It's part of the point of the podcast. Yeah. I understand. I trick, I trick <laughs> you should have to answer one of these questions before you get served at your local pub. And then, like, no one would be an alcoholic anymore. I think that's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that would be great. But, yeah. Um, the, the next question is for Maya. Okay. Um, Maya, who was the late Queen Elizabeth II married to? A, Prince Charles. B, Prince Philip. C, Prince Harry. D, Prince William. That would be B, Prince Philip. I'm getting easier well, ones. Hard. That is correct. Uh, so that is three points for um, uh, for Maya. Uh, one point for Eliza. The next and uh, the next question um, for uh, for Eliza is yes. um, <laughs> British Polish novelist great. Joseph Conrad of is course. regarded as one of the greatest writers in the English language. Name three other notable poles in British culture. <laughs> That's so funny. My you got her. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to accept that. Yeah. Um, Two more. Um, 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 okay, three other notable poles in British culture. I'm going to have Maya Yagoda, who is multimedia <laughs> producer at The Independent. I'll take it. Makes an amazing video series called Decomplicated. You should definitely check it out. Um, <laughs> Don't give them free advertising. <laughs> <sighs> come on. Come on. Who was the example? Joseph Conrad. Joseph Conrad. He's Polish? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> you bring me out here on a Sunday afternoon... <laughs> And make a fool. Uh, maybe I'm making a fool of myself. I mean, to be honest, I can't think of any. And can I just? <laughs> <laughs> I object. I pass. Fair enough. Can I have? Um, do you know the answers? Yeah, some examples would have yes, included. Yes, please. Um, Chris Daya, who was the uh, guitarist for the Yardbirds. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Andrei Tarkovsky, uh, who yeah. left his school. To the Royal Shakespeare Company, oh, or Tracer Ullman what? is the second generation. Her dad is Polish. <gasps> Show me that card. No way. Shit. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I wouldn't have. I, I would have, because it's not a multiple choice question. I would have accepted questions that are not in the card. I but, yeah. see. Okay. Um, Do you want to switch places? <laughs> Maybe. To be honest, I'm glad you got that one. It would have been embarrassing on my end. Yeah. Um. So the next question for Maya. <laughs> Maya, who spell be- your name. <laughs> M A Y. Who became prime minister during World War Second, World War Two? A A Tony Blair, B <laughs> Robert Walpole, C Margaret Thatcher, uh, D Winston Churchill. I feel like I still feel like it's a trick, but D. Oh my God. Well, that's correct. Because I feel like it'd be the one, one of those ones. Like actually, the first half term was served by. Astley. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. There you go. Yeah. No, it was correct. Actually, was it? Right. I don't know. Redact that. I actually don't know. Let's <laughs> don't take my word for that. Yeah. No, it's actually. I think it was Astley. Don't ask me. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Um, so we've come to the final question of the quiz. Okay. Um, we This question is worth 10 points. Oh, of course. Wow. A nice and easy one to finish on. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you still have a chance to win the game if you get this question right. Eliza. I okay. have no doubt that I'm going to get this right. Fantastic. Okay. So the question is, Prime Minister Winston Churchill, yes. who held very controversial views on race, yes. was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1953 for his motivational speeches... Name three other celebrated British white supremacists. Oh shit! Three other notable British white supremacists. White supremacists. So they have to be like. Um, I don't know. Like, I mean, Nigel Farage. Is that fair? I'm gonna accept it. Is that fair? I'm gonna accept it. One. Okay. okay. Um. Living or dead? 
either. Okay. Um, Enoch Powell. Was okay. he British? I don't know him. Rivers of Blood guy. Okay. I think he was like a political commentator. I'm not okay. going to Google it. That's your sure. job. But like, um, Enoch Powell. He was a notable fascist. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm going to get two, two yeah. out of three. Okay. And then my last white supremacist. I feel like there's just so many like, juicy like options to go for. I'm spoiled for choice. It's low hanging we'll fruit. It's low hanging fruit. I can't believe this is worth 10 points. <laughs> I feel like, I feel kind of shady about this, but I will gladly accept the points. I need one more white supremacist. Uh-huh. I'm going to go for, um, can I, can I just answer like the current government? <laughs> well, you can be specific. Okay. Uh, Suella Braverman. Okay. Is that, I'll, I'll accept it. I'll... You'll accept it? Yeah. Can I have my sound effect now? Yeah. 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 <laughs> we would have also accepted um, Agatha Christie for And Then There Went On or uh, any of the members of the royal family. Mm. But, fuck. Yeah. Okay, I was yeah. quite down. No. I would have said Queen um, Victoria as well. Cause... Yeah, fuck. There's so many. Like, yeah. oh, I panicked. So that, was, uh, that was a very close game, very exciting, a very exciting game. Mm. Um, Unfortunately, um, you didn't win a British citizenship today, oh, Maya. Okay. Um, but um, but we learned a lot about British culture. Yeah. And I think that's the takeaway for this I game. I learned that I don't know anything. <laughs> and I'm okay with that because I don't have to do the test. I've learned that as long as I can claim other people's victories as my own, I will always belong in these green and pleasant... You will always be British. In this green and pleasant yeah. land. <laughs> I passed the test. That was the real test. Yeah, yeah. How entitled are yes. you? Yes. Yeah. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Very. On, on that how will we know, um, that this brings us, to, uh, brings us to the end of the show. Um, thank you so much to everyone for listening. Uh, please follow Confused Immigrants on Instagram at Confused Immigrants and like, subscribe and rate the podcast in your favourite platform uh, join us next time for more Confused Immigrants. Thank you and goodbye. Goodbye. Confused Immigrants is created, hosted, written and produced by me, Pablo Sara. Theme song by the Sex Pistols and me. Recorded by Philip Bull and me. Additional music by Carlos Tambrana. An original artwork by Patricia Garcia Pérez. Thank you.